Trade Zero Tuesday. Dan Pipitone back in the chair. What's going on? How are we doing in this market? Having a great day, fellas. Great to be back. Thanks for having me once again. The graphic and the intro gets me every time. I love it. Let's get to the action, of course. uh, uh, You were recently out there in Hawaii. I put it out there. You were in the waves. You're dealing with the waves, and we're dealing with the waves in the market (laughs) right now. How are you dealing with the uncertainty out there? Because I know that, you know, you probably have your own investments out there. You don't got to tell us about it. But how are you dealing with the uncertainty in the market? Well, you know what? I I do want to mention one thing uh, specifically as it relates to the uncertainty and and one of sort of the mitigating actions that uh, our clearing firm is actually taking right now, um, you know, throughout the last month or so, with this, with these regional banks sort of, uh, you know, really scaring, scaring a lot of people, creating runs on banks, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Fed's come in and, and really, you know, provided the backstop. So, um, you know, <clears throat> lots of these banks that you know may have had issues with depositors of, above two hundred fifty thousand past the uh, FDIC backstop, we're, we're, we're looking to potentially have some issues. Um, so as it relates to like trading accounts and whatnot, at the end of the day, when folks are funding their accounts with a brokerage firm, the money is held at a bank. Um, and a lot of times, uh, clearing firms will actually, at, at the end of every day, will sweep money into money markets and stuff like that to create interest-bearing opportunities for folks. Um, but what Apex has done really, I think, is an answer to Apex, one of our clearing firms where Trades of America, we cleared Apex clearing. They have actually created partnerships with lots of different banks so that folks that have on deposit more than 250000 they're actually able to spread via an algorithm the deposits across multiple banks, multiple banking partners to provide an insurance layer of up to $5 million per segregated account. Wow. So really as a, I mean, just beyond next level, this is something that they announced yesterday, um, really as an answer to this. So I'm, I'm proud to kind of announce that here to, to folks that, um, you know, there are some some people who are, who are putting some thought into um, how we can make folks feel a little bit more comfortable and better about where they put their money, um, putting their head on their pillow at night, especially with, with accounts with bigger balances um, you know, I know for, for, for myself, I didn't remember ever having to think about doing sort of the banking two step since 2008, 2009 during the financial crisis, where folks are really scratching their heads as banks fell one after the other. Like, whoa, I have 270,000 in that bank. I am actually exposed by 20,000. Let me spread that around. And that really hasn't been a theme up until about a month ago. Yeah, so, I mean, um, sort of some mitigating banking action from the broker dealer perspective to sort of allay some of those fears as folks have, you know, uh, bigger balances on deposit with their broker. It's I, something I, to think about here. And I'm, I'm trying to remember back to the big short. You know, I read the book back in the day, but remember every the, the person, <laughs> the gentleman in the big short who was betting against it, calling the whole damn thing. And then his own bank, he's like, oh, my God. Deutsche he's bank. like, that I've called Deutsche this. Bank. We're making all this money. My bloody bank's going to go in there. I'm going to lose anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was from the big short. Do you remember that conversation? Yeah, I remember they, who it was. A chat will be on that. But, I mean, you think about it. I thought about it back during the financial crisis, too, because I was doing pretty well in trading. Right? Wouldn't that suck? You call it all. You do it all. Your account's going way up, 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 up. And all of a sudden, boom, your bank goes under. You're like, I lose, too. <laughs> like, that's a worst case scenario. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's important, you know, and it's something you think about when it really starts to get stressful is that is my trading capital safe? You know, is it safe in my account? So, you know, so, it's good news when you feel like, you know, it is when you yeah, can sleep well at night. For sure. So what Dan pretty much told us is he's not as good as the government, but the trade zero backstop, it seems like there's a there's a there's a backstop there. So let's get to the action. Now, one thing that I notice often, Dan, is that for traders often, especially retail traders right now, they want to have access to speed. And I, I use hotkeys before. I don't know if Dennis, you use hotkeys right now. I've seen you cancel all, cancel all oh, real yeah. quick. Cancel all button. Um, so sometimes we need to have access to speed type of trades, especially when we're trading fast movers. I know there's a 
fast movers that we'll be looking at today, like um, the AI stocks, of course. Uh, I, I talked about it as AI stocks get prompted higher today because definitely you've been seeing them get the push. Butterfly Network today is getting a big push on an AI-enabled lung tool. How could we potentially use some features that Trade Zero has to offer so that we could get access to those hotkeys and some fast trading? Cool. Let me show you guys an, an example here. I'm going to present. Okay, he's going to present. And faster is better. I definitely agree with Richard. Uh, it, it is. I mean, <laughs> hotkeys, it's so, so important. I remember the first trading book I read. As you're bringing this up, I'll just tell the story. One of the first books, the trading books I read back in like 1997. And they were talking about sending orders. And the, and, the, and the person in the book was like, I read the order ticket from the top to the bottom and from the bottom to the top to make sure I'm sending the correct order. And I'm like, looking back, I'm like, that was the stupidest advice I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> by, the time, by the time I read the order ticket back and forth, front to top, top to bottom, I missed the trade. Now I've already traded it and traded out of oh, it. You've got to be fast on. Yeah. If you're going to be a, a professional cute. trader, you have to be fast. You Once have you've to be made fast your decision, you you want to execute on that, right? Immediately. So, not like, within, from maybe. idea generation, a discretionary trader, and we're, he's going to show you this right now, a discretionary trader should be able to go from idea to execution in less than five seconds. I'm not mm -hmm. joking. If you're a discretionary trader, you've got to be able to do that in less than five seconds. Okay, so I have my dashboard here. You guys have uh, showed you this a couple times now. Yeah. I'm going to go into the hotkeys section. And um, what we have here is the ability to create a bunch of different hotkeys, whether it be, you know, calling a window into focus, uh, all order actions like we just talked about, like cancel all, replace all, liquidate mm -hmm. all. So these are sort of the nuclear types of buttons. Then you have your set up or send order, which I'm going to do a couple of these right now. Uh, I've set up one in advance, which is a buy ask of plus a penny. Mm, so basically perfect. is I'm going to do it. We'll do a sell. So can we blow it up a little bit more, Mitch, just to see? Because it's hard to. Yeah, I got you, my friend. So maybe he can blow it. I don't know. If I'll make the. In. I'll make it full screen here. Mitch for is going to make it full screen. He's okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Some so of this that should make little... it a little bit better there. If not, we could try to get it a little bit. We'll, we'll zoom in. There cool. you go. So um, I'm sending an order right now. I'm creating a hotkey to sell shares of at the bid price minus a penny. So this is go. something that if I want to get out, especially in the pre-market, uh, is, is a type of key that I would set up. So yeah. in our price source area, you have the ability to leverage all of these price fields, bid, ask, last, average price, et cetera. Uh, and so you can create a price offset. So bid minus a penny. And I am going to now create a label for this. So bid minus 0.01. And then add to the grid. Okay, so now I'm also going to create what we call hot buttons. So while you can create um, multiple actions and tie into a keystroke, you mm -hmm. can then take that keystroke. And if someone's not comfortable with using the keyboard, we can create these hot buttons that are in lieu of pressing. I set up a control B to buy a hundred plus uh, at a ask plus a penny. Control S to sell 100, bid minus a penny. Or I now it can use these hot buttons where they will be appended to my level two window right here at the bottom where I can now easily, instead of doing the keystroke, I can use these buttons. Press the button. So let me just try use this one here. Okay, this is a hard to borrow. You want to locate it? Sure. Let's do a full round trip here. Um, so you just executed? Now I just executed. And I've just actually located 100 shares of, of, uh, of BFly. So let's, so I'm going to go right here. And he's showing how to build these things right now. Once they're built, it's just a matter of pressing one button to execute. So, so actually, that... what happened is I pressed the buy ask of 0.01. That was my label, but the but the short but the button was actually a sell short button. Oh, <laughs> I'm change that to because he's building it on the fly here. He's building uh, it behind the scenes. Okay. And control B or my buy ask 100. And so this is my confirmation window, which you can then uh, just, you can disable this. Yeah, but if I hit okay, my order to go out 
by at ask plus a penny is now out there live at, a, at, at 228. I can cancel this. I could also use my um, button here. We'll, control, we'll do the same type of action. And that button, we actually bought the stock at uh, 229. Yeah. So it's, it's a real easy way and a fast way to get into trades, to get out of trades, yeah. and to really manage positions in a quick way. Yeah, all I this, really like all these. this stuff is critical. I mean, I have it, it's funny that you have these buttons. I have the exact same buttons on my system as well. The, the buy buy at the ask plus one cent people are like, why would you buy a penny above the ask? Because when you put penny above it, it means you're getting you're trying to get the ask for sure. Yeah, I, so you're I like giving it if it moves a tick up, you're still going to get it. You want to be in fast. Mm -hmm. So you Especially still get the, the best available price when you put that. It's not yep. a matter of, you know, you're paying a penny above the ask. You just want to get it for sure. So you're like on that B fly, if he puts that order in there, it's 229 or 230. You know, if the sudden ask suddenly moves to 230, he's going to lift the 232. He wants to get in there fast. Yep. So he's mm -hmm. just making sure. But if, if, you, if your order goes in at 229 plus a penny, you don't pay 230 if it's 229 offer. You still get the 229. So all that is is like lift the offer fast is what that button really is. Yeah. And you probably exactly need right. to adjust it for different stocks, right, Dan? I mean, like you're hundred uh, percent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you were if you were trying to trade Tesla, you know, plus a penny is not going to get you in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not going to get in. Yeah, yeah. you're all day long. So for those who may want to do a dime or fifteen or twenty cents for those sort of nuclear type get me in, get me out type buttons. Yeah, you, you know, it's one interesting order button that I sometimes had, and I, this is when I traded really fast movers that just kind of jump 30 cents or something. I'd put out an offer plus 30 cents to sell at that yes. spot, especially like, let's say for stocks that are coming out of halts, like those really fast movers, I'd throw that out there just in case it would just jump up there. And sometimes I'd get these little instant fills and I'd be like, well, I somehow just got filled there. Let's go. Let's take it. And, and you take some little quick little money there. But like always, one of the things that's very important is scripting it the right way, right? If you script it the right way, every time you hit it, you know that it's going to work for you. Um, having different abilities to get out at that moment is very important too. Because if you're just seeing, you know, if you just hit the sell on the limit, you could start watching that stock just completely just blowing through those limits. And if you're not getting out, you're just wasting cents here while you're, you're already in that decision making, right? So when you want to get out, you need to have the speed to get out. To your point, we do have a range order type that we support, which is essentially one cancels other order. So if mm -hmm. you're in a position, we allow you to put in a stop and a limit for profit, a for profit limit and a stop, whether you be long or short, so that you don't have to babysit the position. If you hit your 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 your, your for profit target, you'll be out. And if you hit your stop, it will it will take you out and also cancel the other side of that order. Perfect. And that's key too. I talk about this. It's funny you bring up all these things. It's funny when, when you get a trader like Dan's been around so much. It's a different conversation than you know. Like I talk about the same thing too. Is people are like, why don't you trade those big you know crazy movers? Why don't you trade that new stock? And you don't want to know why. For the most part, I don't want to babysit it because when you're trading something that's moving, you know. 20 30 40 percent here in a few minutes that's something you've got to stare at the whole time and be working but you know when you have different order types it can take you out and you know having different tools is the key to obviously being able to trade efficiently here so the tools are so important definitely and definitely i like to test uh test those scripts because trust me i've heard some <laughs> stories if you, you guys saw that script. in live action. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to make sure that when you're writing it, write it. <laughs> when you're coding, I'm telling you. I'm correctly. telling you. Oh yeah. I've heard some some horror stories. I have some horror traders. stories for I that. Mean, I've told stories on this show where I've had horror stories. I mean, you hot button things. with that. You know, you I, hot button with like, let's say, a, a buy a thousand shares, but it ends up buying ten thousand shares. That sucks. Yeah, it's a big I, difference. I, I got one for you. So, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of folks who, who are day trading the market also will do things like, you know, play electronic gaming, you know, they're, they're actually, they're playing call of duty while, while they're in the middle of a trade. And, um, we've had instances where folks left the platform up in focus and using their joystick on the keyboard mapped to a hot key that they, that, that was also a function in the game that actually sent orders out. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh my God. That's the future of trading, Dan. They were buying Tesla. 
<laughs> I, I'm waiting for you to tell me about the feature that has the Oculus trading features. I know that's coming soon. Uh, that'll be coming soon. And uh, is the platform uh, available to, uh, to Canadians? Yes, it is. Okay. That uh, was a question. Folks that in the up. U.S., TradeZero.com, Canada, TradeZero.ca. We're an IROC registered dealer there out of Toronto, Ontario. And for our international folks, uh, TradeZero International out of Nassau, Bahamas. All right. Like always, you guys can check out, of course, Trade Zero Pro that you guys saw the platform use today. And we'll have you back on. Dan, appreciate you coming on today. Have a great day, gentlemen. Thanks, Thanks Dan. Well.